Wednesday morning. Mm. Definitely need the coffee this morning. Hope everybody is having an amazing, amazing Wednesday. Happy, well, tomorrow is February. Jeez. January felt like a long month, though. It did. My husband and I were talking about it this morning because he felt like January flew by, but I don't know. I felt every single day of January. So, what all did I read in January? A lot. <laughs> I read a lot in January. Like I said, it felt like a really long month to me. Um, read 15 books, which is a real good month for me. Um, anything over 10, I am happy with. So, 15 is great, even though today is still the last day of January. I know I'm not going to finish currently reading House of... Um, Flame and Shadow. Sorry. I don't know why. I didn't want to say Crescent City 3 in case you didn't know what I was talking about. So House of Flame and Shadow is, is the third Crescent City novel. And that's currently what I am reading. And um, I know I'm not going to get finished today. It's a beefy, beefy book. I'll probably finish it tomorrow, the first day of February. So that'll go in my February reads count. And um, I still read 15 books this month, though. So let's dive into those 15 books. I'm going to put my spreadsheet here and we'll talk about it. Water. Okay. 15 books for the month of January. It's a really good start to the year. I'm really happy about it. I was all over the place for genres, though, if you could see by the spreadsheet there. So the first book I read of the year, like my first book of the year, was Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. That came out the day after Christmas, I believe. And um, I didn't do a video on it. I didn't talk a whole lot about it because of the boycotts that are going on. If you need to know why there's boycotts and things like that, you can... Definitely Google that information. I'm not going to get political on here. But it would be a disservice to the author to not say that the book was fantastic. The book was absolutely wonderful. I, I just ate this book up. It was so good. Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows, they're high on my list of romanticy that I love. They're just really, really well done. It was a great book, too. It was a great, like, all-encompassing duology. Like, I love a good duology where it's one book is not quite enough and they wrap everything up in the second book. It's just really, really good. So, yeah, great duology. Ruthless Vow's got a five-star plus for me. Um, and then I went into At Atalanta, is how you pronounce it, I'm pretty sure. Um... And it is part of my challenge for the year, my um, reading more like Greek and mythology type books. This one fell a little short for me. I just didn't care for it that much. It was a short book and I just feel like it didn't fully develop the story enough. Um, it was really cool to read about Jason and the Argonauts. I had not read a whole lot of lore on them, so that was really cool. It just fell a little short for me. It was a three star, um, so it wasn't terrible. I enjoyed the read, but it, it's definitely not, like, up there with, like, what is her name? I think Madeline Miller is her name, who does the Cersei and um, the Song of Achilles. That writer it does it so well. This one felt, Jennifer Saint's Atalanta fell a little bit short for me. Then... I went to read Cherish by Tracy Wolf, which is the last book in the like Crave series and realized I'd missed a whole book. So we went back and we read Charm 
and then cherish. Now, charm can be read in kind of any order, I guess, because it is just the story of what happens between the two characters who end up together at the end of this series in the um and they have some time in another realm kind of and so charm is about that time in the realm so i wanted to read it before i read cherish just to make things make more sense so i did read charm and cherish both by tracy wolf um i gave the series overall probably like a 3.5 to 4. It wasn't great. It started off really good. Then it does the thing that some fantasy and romanticy does for me. And then it started to get just a little bit too bogged down with the politics and world building and things like that. Well, yes, I agree that we need those things. Sometimes they can get a little dense for me. And that's what happened in this series for the end. It was just really dense with world building and politics and realm building and things like that. That's a personal opinion. The next book, the fifth book that I read this month, though, was The House in the Pines. And that book was so freaking good. It was a thriller. And I did not see the ending coming on that one. So essentially this woman has like really bad anxiety and PTSD from an incident that happened when she was young. She watched her best friend die in front of her. And it was because of this man. And she just, she couldn't figure out, she knew somehow that he had killed her. But she couldn't figure out how or they did an autopsy and, you know, they couldn't figure it out. They said that it was natural death, natural death. She's like, no, this is not a natural death. He was fucking with us. I know he killed her. Um, and so she goes like 18 years or something like that, 15 years. And she, you know, is on a lot of medications. She is just having a lot of issues. And she comes across this YouTube video where another woman drops dead and guess who she is with she's with this guy and it is unreliable narrator absolutely because she's coming off of detox off of some pills that she's been having to rely on for years because of the situation that happened to her and it's just super super good and i didn't see the the, the ending kind of coming when they like finally said what was going on I was like what I'd never read another thriller where that was the case I thought it was really really good so the house in the pines excellent another excellent read another five star plus read and probably one of my favorite books of the year was Ava reads a study in drowning yeah I'm hopping on that train this book was so freaking good a study in drowning is dark academia it's almost gothic in nature it's ya and romanticy and so many things wrapped up in one i thoroughly 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 enjoyed this book like cannot say enough good things about a study in drowning it was a five star plus read for me and one of my favorites of the year i'm very sure uh, the next one was Sarah Adams' Practice Makes Perfect. And I gave Practice Makes Perfect a four-star read. The reason I didn't give it a five is because it fell a little bit short for me, um, especially as somebody who waited months and months and months for this book to drop on the Libby app. And I don't even understand. It's just a rom-com. Like, why were so many people waiting on this book? I don't know. Um, but it just fell a little bit short. It was a good rom-com, but it wasn't outstanding. It wasn't great. It wasn't wonderful. It wasn't life-changing. Um, it just was good. Practice Makes Perfect was a good book. I will say that, but it wasn't great. Um, next up is Aragon. So this series, I feel like I read at least this first book before when I was like a teenager. 
but I wanted to reread the whole series, so I read reread Aragon the first book because of Murtaugh coming out last year. I just really wanted to be able to read it if I wanted to. Um, it's good. I I gave it a solid four stars. Um, I don't know. It was missing a couple of aspects that I love in my fantasy. But it was still really good, and I see why people love it, and I get the hype. It just wasn't great to me. Like, it just wasn't outstanding to me. And I bet if I would have read it as a young person, like my daughter's age, I probably would have absolutely devoured it. For sure. So, I, but I did like it. Like, I don't want people to think I didn't like Aragon. I did like Aragon. After Aragon, I read a book I didn't like, though, and I did do a video on this one, and that is R.F. Quang's Babel. Boy, oh boy, Babel. I think I, I think R.F. Quang is just a do not read author for me, and I talked about that in my video. I think she has so many wonderful things to say so many wonderful ideologies and so many things that she stands for and wants to talk about. But when it comes to actually doing that, to actually putting the words to paper, it reads like a textbook every time for me. At least Babel did. Babel, I felt like I was in some sort of class reading this book. And I had to read this book for, you know, my racism in academia class. That's kind of how I felt, which is an important topic and is a class I would take. But I just wasn't in the mood to feel like I was reading a book for a class. So that's just my deal with Babel. I go more into detail in my Babel video if you want to look that video up. My next read was the only DNF that I had this month and so far for the year. And I didn't DNF it because I didn't like it. I love Kristen Hanna as an author. I DNF'd it because I was not in the emotional headspace to read it right now. And honestly, I may never because it hit really close to home for me with a lot of things. And that's my problem with Kristen Hanna is she gets me right here in the freaking heart. And then I'm just bawling and depressed after I read her books sometimes. And yeah, but that's the four wins. I um, really, really, really felt triggered almost by the relationship between the mother and the daughter as a mother of a teenager and a girl and um yeah it just it was super triggering for me their relationship and kind of the differences that they were having and then also just like you know I'm weird with animals um I, I have a real hard time with animal things so the starving of the animals for because it takes place during the um dust bowl the great depression it was bad I could not handle it so we DNF'd it, but I highly recommend it. If you got a stronger constitution than me, please read this book. It is amazing about a relationship between a mother and daughter. It is very great about um, just struggling during that time period and the things that people were willing to do. Um, the things that scared people will do to survive. It's a really, really good book and I really like it. Next, we read the two books by Liz Tom Ford, which is Mile High and The Right Move. And those were both excellent. Really, really loved Mile High and The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. It's the Windy City series. So good. Did a video on them because they were that dang good. Uh, top tier sports romance rom-coms. Just top tier. Really enjoyed them. Um, if you're looking for a good sports romance with multiple books, check out the Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford. Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. Finally read that one. Um, I picked it up the day it came out and just didn't get it was sitting on my shelf back there. So absolutely, absolutely loved that book. I love that whole world he's created. I love Viv the Orc. She is just so, so cool. And this was pretty much like a, a prequel to um, Legends and Lattes. And I really enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, super, super good. Astrid Parker doesn't fall in love, or I'm sorry, Astrid Parker doesn't fall. It doesn't say in love. 
is by Ashley Herring Blake. I read Delilah Doesn't Care on the cruise and really loved Delilah Doesn't Care. Felt the same way about Astrid Parker. I gave it a four star. This whole Bright Falls world is very lesbian chic. And um, if you like that kind of thing, it is rom-coms that are based where all of the, um, it's all female, female love interests. And they're just really cute. And I, I enjoyed them a lot. So yeah, gave Astrid Parker four stars. And then finally, The Love Wager by Liz Painter. If R.F. Quang is a do not read for me, Liz Painter is a read for me. Read every book. I loved The Love Wager. The only other Liz Painter book I've read is um, Better Than the Movies, and I freaking loved Better Than the Movies last year. So I immediately put two more books of hers on hold at the library. Love Liz Painter. I'm reading Mr. Wrong Number this year, and I have one more of hers on hold at the library. So we're definitely reading more Liz Painter this year. But yeah, that was all 15 books. It was, like I said, all over the place. I got one thriller, handful of rom-coms, lots of fantasy. We were kind of all over the place this year um, for January. I love you guys so, so much. Let me know what your favorite read of January was. Let me know if you read any of the 15 that I read in January. And um, I will see you guys this weekend with a House of Flame and Shadow review. Love you. Bye.